since about 2003, I've been working on the Hemlock Dam project as the project manager, team leader, uh, developing partnerships, doing permitting, getting ready for this. Hemlock Dam was built two miles up Trout Creek from its confluence with the Wind River, and it blocked off over 12 miles of prime habitat for wild steelhead. It's about an hour and a half drive east up the gorge from Portland, Oregon and Vancouver, Washington. The bulk of the land in this 225 square mile drainage is part of the Gifford Pinchot National Forest. And the small towns in this area provide a gateway to Mount St. Helens. In the 1930s, Franklin Roosevelt sought to pull the United States out of the Great Depression by putting people back to work. Through his new deal, Roosevelt formed the Civilian Conservation Corps. The CCC boys, as they came to be known, constructed the Hemlock Dam to provide water and power for a work camp in the area. They actually brought um, teams of horses, which they used to log then, and a few of the steam donkey engines, similar to what's behind me, to the site of Hemlock, and they built the log splash dam. Well, the log splash dam was initially built to allow transport of, of logs down the river. Once the lumber company stopped using the splash dam, uh, the Forest Service decided to retrofit it for hydroelectric use. They built a large Civilian Conservation Corps camp there at Hemlock. There was such a, a pull on the, the hydro uh, plant that it couldn't provide enough power. So they came up with the idea of replacing the log splash dam with a concrete dam. And so it was completed in 1936, and they also built a fish ladder to go along with it. And this was a pretty big deal at the time, because the only other fish ladder that was in existence in this area was the one at Willamette Falls. And so it wasn't a common thing in the Northwest to, to construct fish ladders. Clearly, there were you know, an important run of steelhead through that area. And then in 1998, the steelhead were listed. The Lower Columbia River steelhead were listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. So at that time, we had to decide what were we going to do with the dam. And it cost money to maintain it. And we started doing some studies to look at what the effects of the lake and the reservoir and the dam were on fish and aquatic habitat. The dam and reservoir cause a number of things in the stream uh, that differ from a natural system. So there's impacts both to fish coming upstream and going downstream. So even though there's a fish ladder, uh, there's issues with how many fish are finding the ladder, how many are getting up the ladder, what kind of a delay is there, and then how do they get downstream and what's their condition when they get past the dam. And the whole reservoir is, of course, not good habitat for, for steelhead. And we had to do something because essentially the dam in its current state was not functional for a threatened fish. Through that whole environmental impact statement, looking at the environmental effects, the cost, uh, the pros and cons, we ended up with a decision to remove the dam. The Bonneville Power Administration committed up to two and a half million dollars towards this project to include both environmental impact statement work up front, uh, pre-monitoring work, and then the actual deconstruction of the dam and reconstruction of the stream, what was through the reservoir. The first thing that they did here was really start looking at the water diversion and how to get water around the site because for the duration of the project we've got water quality standards we have to meet downstream. So they've got pipe, they've got a series of five pumps upstream that are pumping water. We're prepared with this pump system to handle 36,000 gallons per minute which is equivalent to 80 CFS. Uh, one CFS equals 449 gallons per minute. So uh, what we figured is if we needed to, we can push all of all 80 CFS through two 24 inch discharge lines. Each line is about 2,000 feet in length through their final discharge point. I think there was almost 3,000 fish that came out of there over two or three days of work. Most of those were, almost all of them were steelhead. There was a couple of Chinook, I think, in there. Most of them were juveniles. We moved all the juveniles downstream and we moved all the, you know, the five or somewhere between five and 10 adults we moved upstream. See anything move? No. <laughs> One of the first surprises was when they dewatered the reservoir and they got out there with their equipment on the first time that they headed out with a piece of equipment. They were able to walk it at least halfway up the reservoir, maybe even two thirds of the way up the reservoir without sinking and getting mired down in the mud. We had uh, several articulated trucks, off-highway trucks that were six-wheel drive to help deal with the soft conditions that were out there. 
Uh, we had excavators for, for loading those trucks and supporting the, the excavation process. We hauled about 2,000 off-highway dump truck loads, about 60,000 yards of material. Dump trucks came and went every six minutes as crews worked double shifts from early in the morning until late in the evening. The work continued every day for 40 days and 40 nights until the sediment plug was removed and the original river channels were revealed. The excitement in the local community and among the crew mounted as the time neared to remove the concrete dam. The crew built a road down to access the base of the dam from its downstream side. The cold joint construction used to build the dam allowed it to come apart in impressive chunks. Throughout the day, the crew removed the concrete using hydraulic breakers, and the metal fish trap was pulled out along with the last bits and pieces of the concrete dam. The historic fish ladder was left intact as a symbol of the fish run that once dominated this river. Once the splash dam and the sediment were hauled out of the creek, the most important and complicated part of the project began, restoring the river channels that had been drowned behind the dam. We had a 1,000 trees that we started with. We did use them up. We ended up going and getting a few hundred more, a couple hundred more anyway. About half of those logs were pushed over, so we retained the root wad on them, and that really helps interlock them and provide structure along the face of those banks. But a lot of the logs that came out of the splash dam were used in the woody debris structures in the channel or the floodplain structure. Some of the vertical pieces and some of the horizontals are splash dam logs. A couple of our permits had us constrained in terms of what kind of water quality could go downstream of the projects. It was dry, we built the stream, and then we started sending pulses of water down to kind of move some of that finer material down to the uh, lower end where we could pump it out of the stream. So we did that several times. We pulsed it and pumped that water out. And then uh, once we had a few of those gone, then we incrementally added water. I think by 11 o'clock that morning, we had the whole thing. The entire flow was back in the stream. We were monitoring closely. The, actually, the day that we put water back into Trout Creek, the day that we first watered the newly constructed channel, was the day that fish came up. So the, several hours after water was put into the stream, we saw an adult steelhead come up onto the site and swim right through our new stream reach. Today is the 16th annual National Public Lands Day, and this year's uh, national theme is water and how water connects with our public lands and to people. Uh, so we are out here at the site of the recently removed Hemlock Dam. But our piece of it today is to start the revegetation process. It's just the early, early stages. Uh, there will be a multi-year, multi-phase revegetation process that begins with seeding, getting some, some species on site, that will out, hopefully outcompete the non-native invasive species. What the kids will do, they'll plant seed in this area, and they'll take those bales of hay and they'll sprinkle them around. That's what we told the kids okay. that, that that had on tennis shoes that were not right. on the top. It's, yeah, they can be yeah. on the mulch job, so they'll be spreading the mulch around. And the idea is that the mulch will hold the seed in place, but it'll also hold the soil in mm -hmm. place, so we don't get all the all sediment washed down, yes. washing down the stream. The Columbia River Gorge is fast becoming the heart of river restoration through dam removals, and local people are looking forward to the future. The removal of Hemlock Dam and the restoration of Trout Creek provide an excellent example of how we can restore our natural systems. And the drainage now provides over 30 miles of free-flowing river and excellent habitat for wild fish. Even now, almost a year after the dams come out, there's Still, a lot of people interested in coming out to take a look at the site, and people are very excited to see a dam that's been successfully removed. I wasn't totally convinced that it was going to put the run back up through there. Well, I was actually pleasantly surprised that it worked as, as well as it was designed to work. My grandkids come over here and they jump off the bridge. We watch them. They can come over here now and look at this and they start crying. They're all upset. A lot of people are, you know. It was a last clean swimming hole, a nice place to swim and a family place. But I guess fish are more important than people. <laughs>
you know, I don't know. It's just going to be really something to miss it, you know. And my son's spirit was supposed to be here. We've always figured, you know, the lake would be here forever. They would never move it, but time changes. The objective here is part of an overall watershed restoration program that we have going on. This is one piece of it. It's probably the largest piece of it, individual piece of it. But over the long term, this is intended to bring back the steelhead run, which would improve the economics of the area in terms of bringing more fishermen back, open up the fishery so that we can again get in here and fish steelhead. And uh, it would also remove those long-term operations and maintenance costs on the dam and all the repair work that we used to spend on the dam is, is uh, no longer out in front of us. The community and even people outside the community had a perfect bird's eye view to watch this happen. And so uh, there were days when there might have been as much as 100 people standing on the bridge, talking, watching, just watching this unfold. 